Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Hope you're, well, hope you're looking after yourself on this pretty uh, gloomy Thursday. Um, I am back from holiday now and uh, a little bit sunburnt. You might be able to tell a little bit, but I am back and recharged leading into the end of this transfer window. Obviously, it's been a good start to the league season for us. Obviously, got another game coming up on Saturday, uh, which is obviously Bournemouth away. I'll have obviously the match preview out tomorrow, but not, not today, obviously. Um, but we're talking transfer, we're talking around Brendan Johnson mostly in this video. Um, there are connections towards this uh, this deal potentially as well. Um, we do have another video a little bit later on about um, some more outgoings as well as an update around the centre half. Um, and yeah, we, we, we've got a lot to talk about today. So we're not going to stall, we're not going to wait around. Um, so let me add some context to the Brendan Johnson situation because obviously being away for the last few days... Um, I wasn't feeling too well when I landed yesterday, so didn't didn't make a video because I was I was out of out of all sorts. Um, we've had news come down days ago, so let me start with some of the news that was from days ago, as well as the news that is more so today. Okay, so Miguel Delaney has really been on this transfer dealing. Okay, and he said that personal terms will not be a problem, and Johnson is willing to go to Spurs. But negotiations between Spurs and Forrest are understood to be hugely frustrating. Chelsea are nowhere near so advanced and haven't got to that stage as they survey potential attackers. Spurs are prioritising an out-and-out -out centre forward, but there are not too many obvious choices available. And there is a belief in the market they will go for Johnson later on in the window if his future is not yet agreed. It is therefore a deal that could go to the last few hours of the window. <coughs> Obviously, we're less than two weeks left of this window. It's a deal that, let's be honest, because it will probably end up being our biggest deal left of the window. I think it will be one that does end up being quite late on, you know. We all, we all remember lots of deals like Dimitar Berbatov when he left us to go to United, seeing him walking across through the glass panels and things like that. These sort of deals can go late because they end up being the bigger deals of that day. And I think that will be one of them. Um... He obviously, if you weren't aware, has chosen Spurs as his preferred destination over West Ham and Chelsea. Obviously, West Ham are looking like they're going to sign Muhammad Kudus from Ajax, as well as obviously Chelsea have signed 8,000 players again. He's probably looking at Spurs as a, I'm going to get more game time. Probably going to get paid more than I would at West Ham, maybe. Um, more of that career trajectory that I want out of either, th either of these clubs at the moment, you know. Those two and Spurs. So I can, you know, I can understand this situation, you know. He's, uh, obviously, I, I believe he's a Welshman as well, saying so, you know, Ben Davies going, oh, mate, you might enjoy it here. Gareth Bell going, it's good stepping stone to Real Madrid. I promise, all right? So that was from Miguel Delaney. He's also added that, you know, we're significantly apart on our transfer value. Um, he also added that Ange Postacoglu is a massive fan of him as well. Um, so... Again, I think Postacoglu, see, it, 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 this is the way I look at it. I think a lot of people go, Levy and Paratici are the only guys doing all the transfer work. The manager has no say. He will be given the players and he has to work with the players. At the same time, that might be true, but you can also like a player. You, you know, Madison was always a Levy signing. Madison was never, never a Postacoglu signing. But Postacoglu went, he probably looked and went, actually, I quite like him. So yeah, I, I'll sign, I'm happy to... <clears throat> I'm happy to, you know, bless that deal, you know. It, you know, he Postacoglu might not have loved Vicario, for example, or Manor Solomon, but he might have also then gone and watched them, you know, watched a little bit of film on them and went, actually, they're not bad. So, yeah, no, I won't mind them, you know. So it can work both ways. It doesn't mean he's being forced into this, you know. Just to give you more of an update around this deal, uh, Simon Jones in the mail, obviously, again, another one I've used his, his sort of... Um, his updates and knowledge a little bit as well. And he said that Tottenham are preparing to launch a bid for Brennan Johnson. Chelsea and West Ham have also been considering bids for the player, but his preference should he move this window is understood to be Spurs. They're reading an offer which could yet include players as Forrest are struggling to land all of their targets. So I think Forrest signed uh, Molina from Atletico Madrid, I believe today or yesterday. Again, I was out of commission really yesterday, so don't hold me if it was yesterday. Um, because we talked about, you know, would Jed Spence be going there? Don't really see them needing Jed Spence now. When you still at Serge Aurier there, now you've got Molina, which, by the way, Atletico Madrid and Forest seem to have a really good relationship. You know, 
fair play to them. Um, but there is a player that I'm going to be talking about who might be going to Forest in a second. Uh, also, Tom Roddy put in that Tottenham will try to secure the signing of New York, Nottingham Forest's Brennan Johnson with a cash plus player deal. However, Tottenham are only, also willing to do a cash only deal. OK, so, you know, you know, the, the, the restrictions aren't completely on this deal. Um, Forest are looking for a fee of about 40 million for the Wells forward, who's also wanted by West Ham. Chelsea had considered making a move for the 22-year-old this summer, but have withdrawn their interest after it was understood that the player's preference would be a move to Tottenham. So again, we're sitting in the driver's seat for Johnson. I do see this being a deal that if we do get it done, I know there's a few comments kind of people thinking we're going to, I think we're going to sign everyone. Never have I ever thought that. Never have I ever said that as well. But it's a, thing, it's a deal that if we were to get this done, don't expect to be tomorrow or the day after. This will be done in a week or so's time. It's... It seems like it's going to be a difficult deal to pull off, you know. So, but let 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 me add this, and this is the player that I was saying that might go back the other way, and this is Tom Roddy as well. He said, "Not in Forest are keen on adding centre backs, Davis and Sanchez. Uh, keen on adding adding a centre back, and Davis and Sanchez is one of the possible players who could be involved in the deal for Brendan Johnson to, that allows them to join Spurs." Um. I think when we look at the landscape of our own centre-half uh, area, <clears throat> it looks like we have a centre-back partnership in Mickey van der Ven and Christian Romero, right? Yes, we still want a new centre-half to come in, which in my next video will be the update around the centre-half situation, as well as outgoings. <clears throat> Sanchez has kind of established himself as that third centre-back, with Ben Davies being... Kind of that left back, left centre back, you know, uh, backup player. <clears throat> we all kind of understand with Dumbas Sanchez, you know, he, he gives a lot for the team, you know, he's athletic and actually he's had a pretty decent start to the season, all things considered. But we know where his ceiling is, you know, and, and we know, yeah, maybe he can get a little better on the ball. And we have seen him actually improve already this summer on getting better on the ball. But also we kind of know the mistakes are there sometimes. You kind of see how it works. And I've always said about players like Dyer or, or Sanchez that maybe we don't see them as a top six and a half that we need them to be. But a team like Forrest, who are sort of mid to bottom table in that sort of range of, you know, sort of 12th to, to 16th, they'd be great there. They, they would be, in my opinion, you know. You've got Colombian international, you've got an England international, for example, Ferret Dyer they would do well at a mid-table team and because because the pressure isn't as high. You know, the mistakes aren't as magnified. The intenseness of a, of a fan base isn't as bad, you know. Teams a little bit lower down the league put up with the mistakes a little bit more because when you do well, they really hold on to it. Whereas that, that's the only problem with a modern top six football fan. All you do is remember mistakes. You don't remember the fantastic play. You don't remember these things. You know, even with, you know, Pedro Porro, people go, ah, he couldn't defend, couldn't defend. But you forget that he actually did have a good defensive game, was great going forward as well. You know, people forget, people forget about Basuma. Oh, he's rubbish, can't play, can't play in the system. Now, all, don't, all things considered last year, yeah, he didn't have a great last year. Come in, he's probably, he, he has been our best player. <clears throat> Same with Charleston. You know, people forget that he was playing on the right wing, which is not his natural position. You forget him going up front or left wing. But you also forget you two games into the season. Let's try and give him a few games to kind of see what he's got. He's Brazil's number nine for a reason, right? So that's the same thing that I look at with the, the centre-half situation. Would it be a good deal with Sanchez? Yeah, it would be a good deal for Sanchez. Would it be a good deal for us to have Brendan Johnson come the other way? Obviously, money and Sanchez. I'm not saying they're worth the same. Don't kill me for that. But yeah, it would be a good deal for us as well. But let's wait and see. We never know. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section below around Brendan Johnson. Would you would you see him being the guy that, you know, he's pretty much going to be our main signing come towards this end of the season? Let me know. I've got more videos coming out a little bit later on as well, around some more outgoings and fresher updates, which is quite nice as well. Not talking about always the same people. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and hit the bell notification for. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, lads.